tide rolls out The summertime is just about gone Howdy folks, Captain Chris here from East Coast Sports Been getting some requests for a video about flounder fishing in the surf and thought I'd try to oblige Flounder fishing in the surf is uh, not a very difficult task You just need to cover ground and be determined and try to find fish If you're sitting in one spot, you're probably not going to have a lot of luck we need to think about the way a flounder eats. It's a little bit different than most fish. Generally, a flounder will lay on the bottom, blend in, maybe throw some sand up on his back, and wait for a bait to swim in front of him. This is different from other fish because he's sitting there waiting for something to come to him. A lot of other fish are cruising around looking for something to eat. So if you think about a red drum, speckled trout, or bluefish, they're usually on the move, looking for something to eat. So still fishing can be productive for those fish. Generally, flounder fishing, you don't want to sit in one place. If you sit in one place, you might catch a flounder that just might be, happen, be coming by, but for the most part, you want to cover ground. I'm going to throw a diagram up here to show what fan casting in the surf is like. And this is the method that I suggest using in the surf. So you're going to want to cast, you know, here, 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 and cover that area. If you haven't had any luck, move down. Sometimes flounder will lay right up in the breakers. If you've ever been walking out into the surf and stepped on a flounder, you'll know that. So once that bait gets 10, 15 feet from you, don't just go ahead and wind it up and get it out of the way and get ready for another cast. Go ahead and bring it all the way up to you because he might bite right at your feet. Also, you want to try to find a slough or, or some broken down pier pilings or fish around pilings, things like that in the surf. Some type of structure that will help you target these fish. But covering ground is going to be your best friend. Also, when you're flounder fishing, to cover more ground, you're going to want to cast just about as far as you can into the surf and drag your baits back to you. Drag your bait back to you. Reel up a line, little line, drag it back to you. We also need to know that flounder don't eat the bait and swallow it and run off like a lot of fish do. They'll grab their baits by the tail and hold on for just a second before they take that second or third bite. So you want to give them a minute to eat their bait. So if you're dragging, you're dragging, you're dragging, it feels like it's hung, stop, put a little slack in your line, wait a minute, depending on the size bait, the bigger the bait, the longer the wait, set the hook and bring him on in. Unless you're using circle hooks, then just start reeling. But uh, this, is, this would be a typical combo that I'd use in the surf. This is a seven foot medium action rod. I've got a, uh, I've got a pin battle reel here, a 3000 size. It'll hold plenty of line. I like using uh, the new Berkley Nanofill. That's a good line to use. Uh, this is a 12 pound test. It's kind of like a braid. It's the same material as braid, although it's not braided, it's extruded. Um, it casts really well. You don't get the squeak coming through your guides, but you want to make sure your knots are, are very sound when using this, uh, this type of line. Um, make sure that uh, if you are flounder fishing and you're setting the hook, try to, try to keep in mind that you know, flounder a lot of times will swallow the bait, and circle hooks are always a great way to go. We sell jig heads that have circle hooks on them, so you can use that with gulp, and that will help bring the bait out of the flounder's belly and get it hung on his lip as opposed to in his belly. And if he is short and you want to let him go, you can do so without harming the fish. Um, we, you can use circle hooks on Carolina rigs. You can use Carolina rigs in the surf with this method of fan casting. You can use gulp baits on jig heads in the surf for fan casting. That's all a good way to go. So you could, you could use a Carolina rig with live bait and a circle hook. You can use uh, buck tails with circle hooks. You can use J-hooks, but you don't want to give them that long if you're using a J-hook. If you're using a J-hook, you probably want to go ahead and set that hook to try to catch that fish so that he doesn't swallow it down and get harmed. But I've had some really productive days flounder fishing in the surf. I know a lot of other people have too. It's also a good way to target red drum and all kinds of other things. So just get out there with a 7 foot light action rod, get wet, enjoy the day, just like you were trout fishing in the fall. Uh, you can do this in the summertime and be productive. Who's Stay tuned and I'm going to show you some of the baits. The latest information, Coast Guard, or Howdy folks, Captain Chris.
Chris Mellon here with East Coast Sports. I'm going to show you a little bit of the tackle and tip section, how to get rigged up for flounder fishing. First off, I'm going to show you how to use a, uh, how to rig up a bucktail. I like to use fluorocarbon leaders. I, I like to use them a lot just because they cut down on the visibility and I think it helps me be a better fisherman. Uh, it does cost a little bit more, but in most cases it seems to be worth it unless the waters are really muddy. Um, I'm not going to tie these rigs out of fluorocarbon just because you guys can't see it, so I'm going to use some heavy uh, power pro to do that. So, when you're tying a bucktail on, I like to use uh, what's called a trialing knot, I think. There's a lot of different names for it, but you just go ahead and put an overhand loop in your line, just like that. Overhand loop in the line. Then slide your bait on, just like that. Then go inside this loop three times with your tag end. So one, two, three. And you can make this loop small and shrink it down and then tighten it. I left that a little bit big just for demonstration purposes. But what it does is it leaves a loop on there and it doesn't take away any action from your bait. If you tied a, a cinch knot on there, if you've got some heavy mono, it can take away from the action of the bait. But leaving it loose like this, it doesn't, doesn't take away any action. It's like using a split ring. Um, then if you want to you know, put a soft bait on there, like say a gulp or anything, I'm, I've got this just because it was a free sample and uh, I don't want to open a whole pack of gulp. But uh, you can take and just slip it on the hook and you would do this the same way for a gulp. like that and that gives you a soft bait along with a bucktail to fish with and that'd be a good bait for uh, you know fishing for flounder offshore or off of the surf you could uh, you know drop it deep on some of the near shore reefs you could also drift through the inlet just giving it a bump now and then while you're fishing it and drifting that'd be a good way to go so that's how you rig up a bucktail and then, you know, you could just tie a surgeon's loop on the end here to attach your line to. You could use a swivel. I generally try to cut down on swivels and things like that. So if you want to tie a surgeon's loop, just double your line, make a loop, and then take this right here and go inside three times. One, two, three. And there's your loop that doesn't slip that you can tie your line to from your rod. And there's your ready-to-go rig, just like that easy enough. Next I want to show you a Carolina rig which is the predominant dominant rig for uh, for fishing for flounder. Man, I just stuck myself good. Not past the barb, luckily. But uh, so to make a Carolina rig you do pretty much the same thing. Um, you'll start out, let's pretend this is a line coming off of your rod. You'll just uh, Slide your line through there and tie on a swivel. And cinch it down and then just make you a then I just do a I just do a cinch knot on my swivel. So you just go one, two, three, four, four or five times, about like that, and cinch it down. Just like that. And your egg weight's right there. I'm going to try to cut this line instead of using those, those crimpers so I don't get a hook in me again. But, uh, you know, some people like to put a bead on here. A lot of times I don't. I don't like to put a red bead just because I think it attracts pinfish and all kinds of other things to my bait that I don't want attracted to my bait. But some people think it helps protect the knot, and it might. Um, you can also buy clear beads that would be a good way to go, or glass beads to make a clicking sound that might help attract some fish. But this is just from your line. You just put an egg sinker on your line and tie a swivel on. And then, a lot of times for flounder fishing, I like to buy these Eagle Claw 147-1 snelled kale hooks. They're already ready to go with a small amount of leader on there. That's all you really need. And so I just take the loop right here that comes on these snailed hooks, stick it through the eye of the swivel, 
and then pull the hook back through that loop. And there's your pre-made Carolina rig. That's good for fishing in the surf, drifting the inlet, fishing on a ledge. It's even a good sheephead rig. So you can use it for all kinds of things. It's a great way to uh, get rigged up. It's quick, easy, cheap, and uh, a lot of guides around here use this rig for all kinds of fishing, even red drum. But um, thanks for listening to my tackle and tips section. And uh, come on down and see us at East Coast Sports. If there's any questions you got, just send me an email. I'll throw my email address up there for you guys to take a look. Thanks a lot. One more day.